Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about doing the Mo App Works. So um, we're going to start off with this particular lawn just to kind of give you an idea what can you be in for when you come to these things. So without further ado, I'll show you the lawn. So this is the front. It's not even as bad as the back. don't know if I'm going to be able to get my zero turn into this backyard so this might all have to be I don't know weed whipped or what but there's trash I don't know how well you can see it in the grass we got trash all over the freaking place here it's all gonna to have to get picked up before I can get started so dog toys I must have some big dogs that really destroy the lawn um, And we'll get this mowed down, get it all cleaned up, all nice and pretty. But first we'll pick up the trash. There's a couple of apps that you can use. Uh, Plaza Mows is one of them. Another one, this one that I'm using actually is Lawn Guru that this popped up on. Um, but there's uh, several different apps that you can use. And it's just a matter of finding which one works best for you. And then got my tape measure in the truck so I'm gonna measure this gate to see if I can get the zero turn in there I'm still gonna use it on the front yard with how tall this is but if I can't I might have to get the ego out and mow the backyard with that um I'm gonna use the zero turn on the front lawn and then I will uh, proceed to the backyard I'll probably whip it down before bringing the uh, mower in because that's really tall for that that grass and I do have the gas whip with me so we'll probably use the gas Ryobi instead of the electric but I only have the Ego mower with me so we'll see how that works so when you get you deal with grass this tall you almost pretty much have to go with gas the battery is just not gonna cut it uh, I should also probably tell you that this isn't the only one of these. This is the first one I've ever did as far as an app for mowing. I've worked with the snow plowing in the past, but I've never done mowing. So this was the first time I've ever done this. I did do a few other yards throughout the day. And I will tell you a little bit more as we go on about those other yards as well. All right, we got the uh, front yard cleaned up. I'll give you a quick view of that. It's not completely cleaned up. We still got to get the whipper out. That's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go grab the Ryobi gas whipper. And uh, let me shut these off. These are my 3Ms that I've looking, been looking for all winter long. They were in the back of my truck underneath some rags. Um, I'll give you a quick view of what the yard looks, the front yard looks cut twice. And then I'm going to whip down the backyard because I can't get this big mower in. I tried even, but it's a 36 inch gate, 42 inch mower. So I'm going to go ahead and get this put away, we'll grab the whipper, and we will head to the backyard. I don't seem to have that problem with my uh, electric weed whip. So this is the first weed whip I ever purchased. It was I bought a five for five bucks on Marketplace, and it has served me very well over the years. As you can see, it's doing its job again right now. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you. Not every single lawn you pick up on an app is going to be this overgrown. Like I said, this is the first one I ever picked up. I picked it up because it was in my own subdivision. And it was really close to home. So I figured I'd start here. And then I got, I had the mower and everything set up. So I was like, well, I'll just keep going and do a few more. So out of the five that I did this day off the app, one of them was picture perfect. I mean, it's exa exactly what you would want to walk into when you walk into a lawn. And then the there were two more that were pretty much overgrown quite a bit like this. And then there was one that was still overgrown, not quite this bad, but was 
still overgrown. Um, I mowed that. I did manage to, to mow that one once, but I had to mow it tall. So we'll see how that works out. So there's some things with the apps that I want to kind of point out. Number one, um, don't be that guy that just kind of doesn't look at the job and just clicks on things right away because if you start dropping jobs, you're not going to be on the app very long. So that's one thing to look at. Uh, and I know because this has been a big problem and it looked like that this problem just got fixed with Lawn Guru this spring that they dropped that guy because he would sit there and just click right away and nobody else would have a shot at anything. The other thing about the apps is don't look at it as a marketing strategy or as a business plan. Yeah, I know you, you if you go into, you know, Uber and a lot of the ride sharing that there are people that are just trying to do this as their business, I guess you can say as their, you know, job. This isn't quite the same. So I would not look at that as a marketing strategy. It's still taking off. And the problem that I do have with the apps is, as someone who's in lawn care, um, with the apps, you're not working for yourself. You're working for someone else. You're working for the company that owns the app. So in a sense, that whole idea of, I started my own business so I could be my own boss, you're kind of tossing that away if all that you're using is the apps to gain jobs. That, so that's something to keep in mind as well. This is not a very good business plan uh, to run off the apps. Like I said, I just wanted to just come up with a way to come up with some filler uh, for my routes so that I can keep working and keep making money. The other thing is is that they will probably charge the same amount of money you will. Um, some of the, you guys that are trying to undercut everybody might be like, oh wow, this is a lot of money. But they're actually run off of the fair market value and then they take a cut. So you're actually doing these lawns typically for less money than you would normally if you booked them out. Uh, one of the, the guidelines that they have in there, you can't steal customers or anything like that. So that kind of, it kind of falls into that. And there's you have to understand how people use these apps as well. In this one here... The guy basically posted, hey, I just need someone to cut my grass because my lawnmower broke. And I can guarantee you this has not been touched all season because just, just by the trash that's been accumulating over the winter. There were a lot of clothes in the uh, backyard. Oh, there's that shovel that I mowed over. S that thing was really well buried in there. But yeah, there were some clothes in the backyard. And I'm guessing it was the dog dragging them outside during the winter. And they just never picked them up. Uh, they, like I said, it looks like they have some really big dogs that are really tearing apart the yard. And I'm sorry for my shirt. I'm not wearing a muscle shirt. Uh, I kind of gain weight over the winter and then I lose a lot over in the spring and the summer. And we've had a late spring, so I haven't had a chance to lose that weight yet for that shirt to fit me. Uh, just a quick side note there. And so getting back into the apps, uh, this is not a good business plan and you just it's it's basically you want to look at this more as filler so one of the things is that you that customers are allowed to sign up for weekly mows that you can sign up and click on it and you know do a weekly mow for a customer however if they don't like it i'm sure they can probably drop you and try to pick someone else up and so the, but i really don't go for those i just go for the one-time mows when i go for these apps and one of the main reasons why is a lot of them are out of my area. When I did snow, I would do the same thing. What I would do is I would do my route, and if there was anything up or left, I would look at what else I could pick up. And there was one that I did on a regular mow job, or not a mow job, plow job on, but he was already set up in my regular route. None of the weekly mows are set up in my regular route right now, so I really haven't picked them up. And there really isn't any areas that I really wanted to go into. So, because some of the ones I actually did this particular day, I, I could have done on a weekly basis. This was not one of those lawns, but there were a lot of them that I could have done on a weekly basis. Um, I just choose not to because 
ultimately I'm working for myself or I like to work for myself. I like to have my own business. I don't like to work for someone else because now you're getting basically put on someone else's payroll and you're dependent on them to pay you. And they're hiring you as a private contractor. So imagine just being a private contractor for a company. I mean, you still have a boss. You still have somebody over you that can watch over you and take care of everything and, you know, fire you on the spot if they want. So I, it's really bad business practice to put all your eggs in this basket. I will tell you that right now. Uh, a lot of com- a lot of people real have realized that a lot of times, too, is with with one with how these uh all of these things work they can actually get you cheaper by hiring you directly as opposed to hiring you through the service the service takes a certain cut and they might be just slightly above market and by the time they take their cut they have you below market and taking a a percentage for themselves now they're not taking huge percentages for themselves but in a sense you're mowing for less money than you would scheduling this yourself and the customer is paying more money than they would hiring you directly from a customer perspective there's some issues as well Um, you don't know first off you don't know who you're going to be getting you don't know if they're going to be any good you don't know if they're going to be reliable or anything like that Uh, from a customer perspective in my opinion the apps are best used like if you got to go on vacation if you're going out for two weeks and you need somebody to mow the lawn for a week or two that might be a a good option for you because you could actually schedule the mow dates Uh, the other thing is if you're dealing with snow and you're going on vacation you can actually set up an auto plow as it's called at least on lawn guru and you can go on vacation and if it snows during that time somebody will cover it I know typically I have a lot of customers, um, my, a lot of my Mo customers will actually call me up during snow time if they're going to be out of town for a prolonged period of time and say, hey, I'm going to be out of town from here to here. If it snows, can you take care of me? And I say, yes. So it it's beneficial to have a, a lawn guy because I take care of my snow customers kind of like I would uh, my lawn customers. They call me for lawn mowing. I will make the one-off time for them and vice versa my lawn customers if they need me for snow I will make the the one-off time for them as well so that's one of the benefits of I guess you could say having that guy but if you don't an app might be beneficial for that for that one-off time when you're just on vacation you might need a week or two or something like that and you don't want to go searching around for somebody they give you a set price there is an option and i actually took it on this particular property where you can get um if the grass is over a certain height you can actually ask for more money but this is the end of the video so i will see you next time